Today we're gonna talk about metal infused filaments, so let's go grab some. So when I'm at a trade show or a convention, I get a lot of people that ask me, hey, can you 3D print metal? And while yes, you can, there are some massive industrial grade machines, and there are also some in development for desktops, they are still pretty expensive. But there are other options if you have a consumer or desktop 3D printer. So if it takes in filament, there are things such as metal infused PLA. Usually 70 to 60% PLA to 30 to 40% powdered metal, and sometimes they also can do carbon fiber. And for that, print settings are all the same. But with that, you get the look of the metal without having to print actual metal. Now it's not going to give you the strength options, so you're not going to be able to print a stainless steel fill, and this is going to last just as long as one that was cast in solid stainless steel. It is going to have the same structural capabilities of PLA and maybe even a little worse because of the powder. So having the powder in there does make even the filament a little more brittle. So you want to be careful if you're using a Bowden setup or you have a 3D printer that's not constrained, it may snap a bit more easy. So most 3D printers come stock with a brass nozzle. Now brass is very thermal con thermally conductive. So if you were to print any sort of material at high temperatures, it can transfer heat from the heater block to the brass to the filament very quickly. But brass is also very soft. So if you print any other material in it that's harder than the brass, it will wear down your nozzle and turn your 0.4 into a 0.8, maybe by the end of the spool. So you could upgrade and get a stainless steel nozzle, which is not much more expensive. More nozzles usually are around $25 at most for just standard metal nozzles. This will last you a good while, but if you really wanna make sure that your nozzle is gonna last through a brass fill and steel fill and carbon fiber PLA, a hardened steel nozzle is a great next step. It's not as thermally conductive as brass, but it will hold up to basically anything you can throw at it. If that's not enough for you, you can always go with the Olsen Ruby. So it's a brass nozzle, except it has a ruby as the actual part that makes contact with the materials. So it's not gonna break down, it's not going to wear out. So if you have a hardened steel nozzle, if you have a ruby nozzle, you're ready to start 3D printing with these metal infused filaments. But for print settings, it is just like PLA. So if 190 works for you, if 220 works for you, that's a good range to work with and just see what your printer prints best at. And for bed temperature, room temperature to 60 is good. If you're printing on blue tape or build tack or glass or PEI, whatever is your normal PLA print surface will work well with this. Although you may want to slow it down just a little bit because like I said, the filament is a little more brittle and it will be a little more prone to breaking if you try to extrude it too quickly rather than just chewing through the filament, it'll just snap it and you'll have a bunch of breaks within the Bowden tube or it'll break before it can even get into the nozzle. So it is a little more temperamental than regular PLA but you can get it to work. For layer cooling, you will want to have a fan. It is PLA, so overhangs are going to be a bit more uh, problematic if you don't have that layer cooling fan. This part of Phil, usually you can see if you have poor layer cooling under the backside of his backpack. All of these look great. I believe I printed these on a Pulse, so that had a hardened steel nozzle. Did a great job with that. Let's go into support settings. So you will want to make sure that there is a good amount of room between the bottom of the print and the top of the support. So on the Mad Max skull, there is support within the mouth under all the teeth that go into the back. And if, if your support settings aren't good enough, if there isn't enough of an air gap, it will basically weld to the print. And with this, it's a lot harder to get into those crevices and peel it out. It's not like just a straight PLA print where when you print it, you can go in there with pliers and flush cutters and really wrench on it to get it out. From there, with post-processing, there are several different options. You can go to a low-cost hardware store and get a cheap rock tumbler. I saw one online for $45, 
and this, on the same website there was media, which is the material that goes into the tumbler to actually do the polishing. You can also burnish it where you take some steel wool and you polish the outside of it and you just really go at it. So rather than use like sandpaper, which is very aggressive, the steel wool just kind of polishes the outer layer. You're not gonna get rid of layer lines as easily, but it will be a little gentler than using the rock tumbler. And it's a little more controlled as well. You can rust iron PLA if that's what you choose to do. Just water, salt, vinegar, hydrogen peroxide. That is a good combination. You don't need anything more caustic than that. That is good enough as is to do this rust job. And I do wanna reiterate, these do not have the material capabilities of actual stainless steel or actual brass. So don't expect to print a full-size sculpture out of brass and expect this to last as long as a 100% brass casting. Um, it's, it's just PLA. It's PLA with a little metal in it, and the metal actually makes it perform worse than just pure PLA would. So only use this for decorative purposes and not for anything that might face any sort of resistance or load bearing. So you wouldn't want to print printer parts out of brass fill, but it would certainly look cool if you tried it. So I don't normally do a lot of metal infused PLA printing like brass fill or steel fill here. I printed a couple weeks ago and I followed these tips of print temperature, bed temperature, how fast I print. But other than that, didn't do any sort of troubleshooting, didn't do the test towers since I was pretty confident in the printer's capabilities. But it is something that I don't use that often. I'm mostly printing in PLA, ABS, and PETG, but I'm not going for the metal stuff that often because I don't need to print a lot of decorative things. But if you're printing jewelry, if you've got little widgets on your cosplay that you need, this is a great solution for that. So hopefully within this video, this has given you some ideas on how to incorporate, maybe adding some brass knobs to your cosplay armor or making some rusted Mad Max rings. Whatever you can come up with, Metal Infused PLA gives you a lot of new options. I'm Alan from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printed.